William Byron wins the Daytona 500. Maybe there's a little bit of controversy around that. Austin Hill goes for a three-peat in Xfinity and the truck race just morphed into Mad Max. Let's get into it. All right, I am back from Daytona, back into the home office, was able to get some work done today. I haven't slept in nearly 36 hours. I've been awake since 6 a.m. on Monday morning because I was just too excited. I wanted to get to the racetrack, get to the racetrack, find out that the Xfinity race has been pushed from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Now I have to fill six hours. That was a real bummer, slightly delirious, but we're going to talk about the Daytona 500 and the other races that happened this past weekend, including a little bit of controversy at the end of the 500 because it's not a NASCAR race if there's not people on the internet that think that it's a bit of a conspiracy. So you have William Byron winning the race, but the internet is convinced that Alex Bowman should be the winner like JFK, 9-11, Helen Keller, Bohemian Grove, Richard Petty's 200th win, or Paul Tracy winning the Indy 500. This also belongs in the R Conspiracy subreddit because it's absolutely not true. In the case of what we're talking about here, Alex Bowman, when you look at his onboard camera, they take the white flag, William Byron, Alex Bowman. The caution then comes out. From the onboard camera of Alex Bowman, it does appear that he's ahead, and you can see it right here. The problem with that is where the camera is mounted at and the field of view that you get from that camera makes it look like that. So the internet was convinced that Alex Bowman should have been in victory lane and not the 24 car. Put the 48 car there, the second famous number at Hendrick, put the 24 car back in second. Except that's not what happened. NASCAR got so tired of hearing about all of the conspiracy theorists on Monday night saying that they got it wrong that they posted the screenshot, the the still shot from the Goodyear blimp of the moment of caution and where the two cars are on track. And you can clearly see that William Byron is ahead. You can see the caution light down here by, uh, by the grand or by the um, flag stand. And then you can see the 24 car clearly ahead of the 48. When you, look when you looked at NASCAR scoring on their leaderboard, whether on their website or on their app, it had William Byron ahead by six one thousandths of a second. Is that what it is? That eh, remains to be seen, but that was the last you know, posted interval between the two of them, which is really, really close. I mean, really close. Why didn't we get the 2021 basically VAR of it? I don't know. When we had McDowell and it showed him ahead of the nine car, I don't know what happened to that. Apparently Fox decided to just scrap that because I guess there's really no other time to use it other than maybe at the Daytona 500, maybe at Talladega. But overall, William Byron is your winner. There's no controversy here. People can stop breaking down the video like they're Abraham Zapruder and they, they filmed what they think is maybe the most, you know, important piece of NASCAR history. It's just not. It, I mean, it's Alex Bowman finishes second. And Alex got out of the car and he was like, I was hoping we got him. We didn't. We finished second. End of story. It's over. William Byron's your winner. And it's very on brand for Hendrick Motorsports. Comes 40 years to the day that they entered their first Daytona 500. It's been 10 years since their last Daytona 500, which weirdly enough, the last time they won the Daytona 500 was also a year that Toyota swept the duels. Toyota sweeps the duels again, and Hendrick Motorsports wins the Daytona 500. So maybe the two are tied together there. And he takes the 24 car back to victory lane at the 500, 19 years after Jeff Gordon did it in 2005. Everything was just coming up Hendrick Motorsports. I was standing down in the fan zone before the race. I had the VIP hot passes for this race. So I was kind of just hanging out all over the place. And I went to the fan zone and was just kind of checking that out. And they were talking to Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson. And both of them made a point that this was the 40th anniversary for Hendrick Motorsports. They wanted to get one of their cars to victory lane. And I was like, they're going to, they're, this is how this is going to happen. They're absolutely going to do this. And they went out there and did it, which is great for them. Overall, I really like this race. I gave it an 87 on my Was This a Good Race video on TikTok. I think that's a solid number. I know there's a lot of people that are going to complain that most of this was fabricated um, racing because everybody was saving fuel. That's why we got the three wide by like 10 rows deep for a good portion of this race. At the end of the day, it passes the eye test. You can still come from the back and go to the front. And you don't necessarily have to save fuel if you don't want to. Uh, should NASCAR do something about that? Potentially. But Eric Jones was like, we basically ride around for 180 laps. And then we just have this 20 lap sprint at the finish. He's not wrong. Uh, I would argue that the end of both stages was actually really good. And I thought the strategy through stage one was really good as well. It was pretty compelling following that from Pitt Road. At the end of the day, I liked it. What I didn't like was Brad Keselowski doing what Brad Keselowski does, which is drive through people with no regards 
to anybody else. He's out here driving like Paul Walker, and unfortunately, everybody else ends up, you know, taking the brunt of all of this force. He's weaving in and out, driving through people, and he drove through Harrison Burton, who had a really good car, seemingly, in the duels. I did feel bad, though. I was standing on pit road before the race and just kind of around the area of Doug Yates and Jeff Burton, and they seemed very happy. And then seven laps into the race, their day's done. It's like, well, that's a huge bummer. We sat around all weekend for that. Not the best thing in the world, especially for Harrison, as he needs to at least show something of promise this season, you would imagine. I got very sunburnt, too. So if you see this, the sun came out. It caught me off guard. Everybody at the airport on Tuesday morning also was very sunburnt. And I was like, you were at the race because, yeah, it was bad. But the rest of the race, after that first incident, everybody kind of just rode around. Like, mom scolded us. We got to act right for a little bit of time. And then all hell broke loose at the end. But up until that point, I thought all the racing was good throughout the uh, throughout the day. I have no complaints about it whatsoever. You had good strategy. You had nine different leaders leading 10 laps or more. That's great. All three manufacturers made charges to the front. They all worked together. I don't know what else you could want from this race other than maybe like a full 100% throttle race, which I think we all want, of course. And then, of course, we get down to the end of the race and you're like, well, how many cars did we wreck? Half of them? Easy. Like 18 cars got caught up in this incident uh, in the final 10 laps where the 48 car of Alex Bowman was shoving the 24 car of William Byron, got him sideways. He clips the six, puts him into the 22. And you knew the six and the 22 were always going to end up in a heap together, whether they were going to take each other out or have something like this happen. The way those two were racing, it just made all the sense in the world that they would eventually end up wrecked next to one another. Um, wonderful. So that wrecks half the field. William Byron, Alex Bowman survive. Ross Chastain survives. Bob Walls, Austin Sendrick. Those are your main players there at coming back around Corey LaJoy for the final restart. And then coming to the white flag, really good racing. The two car of Austin Sendrick, he goes low a little bit to block coming into the trioval. The one car of Ross Chastain's like, I'm either going to drive through the 24 car here or try to thread the needle and get all of this Daytona 500 glory for myself and Bush Light in their first race together. And he almost had it. He was out there driving like he was ready to meet God. It just didn't work out for him. And the two car clipped him. And the two of them went sliding across the infield there. And, and honestly, NASCAR holds the caution because it looked like they were just going to be two single car spins, not going to hit anything until the two car came back up across the track, tagged the 60 car. And then NASCAR was like, we have to throw a caution here. They throw a caution after the white flag had already been taken. Race is over. William Byron is your winner, not Alex Bowman, contrary to what all the conspiracy theorists say. And that's that, essentially. I did like the fact that um, Justin Marks, after the race, I was standing down on pit road where Byron came through to go towards victory lane. And he went out on you know pit, pit road there and congratulated him. He's a great team owner. He's going to be around for a while. So love seeing things like that out of... Uh, out of the sport, which is always always nice to see. You like to see a good level of sportsmanship every now and then. But William Byron wins the race. NASCAR is in a lose-lose here. If they throw the caution immediately, everybody's like, you just want to set up an overtime to create more carnage in this moment. They hold off on throwing the caution, and everyone's like, why do you throw the caution? It's a lose-lose for them. They had a great finish setting up between the 48, the 24, and the 1 if everything stays together there, and it just didn't. And sometimes things don't work out exactly how you want. But I'm totally fine with the way the race ended. One, it was the right call. They did the right thing holding off on the caution um, because at the end of the day, I don't want to see any more of these cars get wadded up. And they also, I'm standing on pit road watching it, and it was so bang-bang. It basically happened 150 yards before the start-finish line when all this broke loose. There's... Could they have hit the the yellow light? Maybe, but it was like, boom, boom. And you're like, oh shit, this is already done and over with here. And they're already sailing down into turn one. So they made the right call, have absolutely no problems with that. Um, some people might, but at the end of the day, I liked it, gave it an 87. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the race, what you would rank it. Moving on to the Xfinity race real quick. Full disclosure, did not say for the full Xfinity race, probably three quarters of it. Did not bring proper, apparently, Daytona Beach winter gear because it got pretty cool, which part of that was the the sunburn. Top of my hands are sunburned. Uh, my face is sunburned and windburned probably too because it was windy. 
I was just like, I'm ready to get out of here. Plus, I got to go to Orlando, catch a flight at 6 a.m., flew Frontier for the first time ever. Not a low-budget airline guy. Call me bougie if you want. It's like I'll never buy food on clearance. I'll never buy, I don't want to buy a discounted airline ticket. Uh, To me, if you pay a little bit more, it means you're probably going to get there safer. Flew Frontier because it was the only one that had a 6 a.m. departure that got me back home in time where I could log in and and continue working for the day because didn't take any of my work stuff with me. Why would you? I'm on vacation. Flying Frontier must have been what it was like to fly in the 80s. That's the only thing I can figure because you get no Wi-Fi, no drink service, and you have no screen to tell you where you're at. We could have been in, we could have gone anywhere. I have no clue. I'm just trusting this pilot to get me wherever he, wherever she wanted. I had a female pilot. Um, she did a great job. Although, she was flying this Airbus at times like she was the Thunderbirds uh, during the pre-race. We were just going along and all of a sudden we're like turning. Boom. Whoa, shit. Where are we going here? Um, she was aggressive on the turns. I'll give her that. Speaking of the Thunderbirds real quick. For the 500. First pass, great. The second pass, somebody buzzed the tower there at Daytona. It, if spotters didn't duck, I'd be shocked. I was on pit road. It damn near blew my eardrums out. I was like, this is the loudest thing ever. All right. Xfinity race on Monday night. I don't even know what day it is anymore. Like I told you guys, I haven't slept in 36 hours. I'm delirious, so you get what you get at this point. Austin Hill goes for a three-peat, Pat Riley style, and gets it done. Andy Petrie was happy in the booth, apparently. I didn't get to hear all of it. I caught the very end of him. Apparently, he was super biased. I really wanted Sheldon Creed to win just because that would have been absolutely hilarious uh, there. Justin Allgaier smelled somebody smoking very potent weed down in turn one, which, again, very funny. It was like the most dad thing ever uh, that he would kind of complain about. Overall, the racing, from what I saw, seemed pretty good. A lot of wrecks, per usual, I think, for the Xfinity Series at Daytona. I haven't gone back and watched the broadcast all the way yet, so I'll eventually do that. Um, But from what I saw, pretty straightforward. 21 car won. Bummed everybody out, so... That is what it is. He locks himself into the playoffs. Friday night's Truck Series race. Did watch all of that from home before I left for Daytona. It was, I mean, it was a Truck Series race. It's basically just become ARCA, and I hate that. It's, it, it's Mad Max out there. It's anarchy. It's absolute chaos. The two kids from Taldanga Nights where they're just running around going, anarchy, anarchy, I don't even know what it means. That's what the Truck Series is. None of these kids know what the chaos is that they're causing, but they're causing a ton of it. And then you have Raja on the last lap, just kind of hang a right for some reason. Turns Taylor Gray. He flips up, lands on top of Daniel Dye. I joked with Daniel about that on Monday in the garage area. Um, catching an F-150 doesn't seem very fun. He said it's not very fun either, which I expected. But the race overall was fine. Nick Sanchez wins. I said when he resigned there that winning was the next step for them. They should have won last year. They get it done in the first race this season. Locks himself into the playoffs already. Matt Crafton had to be absolutely furious about that. So don't try that in a small town, Nick Sanchez. Actually, got nothing to worry about there. So overall, like that, the ARCA race, I didn't watch any of it. I did watch the highlights. And when I say watch the highlights, I watched 11 minutes of crashes from that same race, uh, which was exactly what I expected. I had some hope for ARCA, and then I saw who's in it. And the talent level of ARCA this year is bad. It's not good. It's very bad. Very bad. Um, Gustine wins. Why Jake Finch thought he would do a teammate restart on a one-lap shootout for the trophy makes no sense to me. So everybody's off to Atlanta now. We have an Xfinity truck doubleheader on Saturday, Cup on Sunday. Weather should be good for Atlanta. That is an absolute godsend because usually it doesn't happen. It rained one spot in the United States this weekend. And that just happened to be Daytona Beach, Florida for literally 48 hours. It just kept raining. I got to Daytona on Saturday. It rained every single moment until basically 10 a.m. on Monday. I'm so tired of the rain. I don't want to look at my rain jacket for at least a month now. All my clothes were just wet in some capacity at some point this weekend, and I'm over it. But I wouldn't change it for the world. Had so much fun. Um... Thank you again for the passes. I'm not going to say who slid those to me, but um, yes, very fun weekend overall. Excited about it. Looking forward to Atlanta. Looking forward to getting back to our racetrack again soon. 
I need to go sleep though. So let me know in the comments what you thought of the race weekend. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.